serious? Are you serious? They actually did shut the United States government partially down. <coughs> what? Can I, can I just have a little bit of coffee this morning? Well, here's what report. The United States government shuts down for the first time in 17 years as the budget talks fail. The United States federal government is partially shutting down after the Congress failed to fund its work amid a Republican drive to defund Obamacare health care program. President Obama addressed the United States troops to boost their confidence amid the crisis. Now, the Congress left the government without funding as com <laughs> uh, competing and spending measures are bouncing back and forth between the Republican-controlled House of Representatives and the Democratic-led Senate late into Monday night. Um, the partial shutdown will leave some essential government functions, including national security and public safety, intact. It's not clear how long this situation will continue, with lawmakers expected to take a further vote in a matter of hours. But if the shutdown persists, it will affect an estimated 800,000 public workers who will be forced into an unpaid leave as the government would be unable to fund their employment. Now, national parks and most federal offices are closed, as is almost all of NASA, except for mission control. Just received a phone call. I just received a phone call from California. I have a friend that's on HUD. And she says that the HUD office is closed until October 4th. I just received a phone call from a friend in California who, who was on HUD. And she said that the office was closed until October 4th. And uh, people on HUD better uh, check with their local offices to see if they're all shut down or it's just a coincidence that they're closed until October 4th. Why would, if it's the shutdown, how would they know they're going back on October 4th? So heads up on that. All right, let's continue with Paul Bagley, Pastor Paul Bagley. For mission control in Houston. And then, of course, the Smithsonian Museums and the, and, the, and the National Zoo and most of the parks and the website of the U.S. Department of Agriculture went blank and blah, 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 and most of your monuments. But, and there was a tweet by the President of the United States. Uh, they actually did it, he said. A group of Republicans in the House just forced a government shutdown over Obamacare instead of passing a real budget. And that was the uh, tweet from the President of the United States on his Twitter account. Now, the one disturbing thing out of all of this, to be quite honest, is NASA is being completely shut down, except for mission control just to talk to the space station. That means the Hubble telescope, the observatory, Everything, the rover on Mars. We got a comet on its way. Comet Ison's on its way, bringing a ton of debris. We've had meteorites r crashing through the atmosphere in the last 72 hours. And right now, this is not the time to shut down NASA. Unless, unless you know more about what's, unless NASA, unless the United States federal government knows more about what's getting ready to take place than we do. And they don't want us and they don't want us to see it maybe or don't want us to know what it is. I mean just back in January, Brian Williams of NBC News 
came on the air live and said this. We'll remind you as the day gets closer so you can stock up on snacks and beverages, but a comet is coming, a big and brilliant comet arriving in November 2013. It could potentially be 15 times brighter than the moon and visible in broad daylight over the U.S. We will be your comet network and we'll keep you updated. What does that mean? Was that a little, uh, a little clue? You better stock up on snacks and beverages. Did he mean food and water? And why all the way back in January of this year with the NBC Brian Williams throw that out there at us? He told us exactly. Late November 2013. Well, what's coming late November 2013? Comet Ison. It's when it will be its closest point to the sun. Now, I've got some information. So, right now, today, Comet Ison is supposed to buzz Mars. Uh, really, 6.7 million miles from the surface of Mars, but that's still considered buzzing. That's still going by pretty close. Well, let me give you some information. Comet will buzz Mars in the pre-dawn sky today, Tuesday, October the 1st. Famed Comet Ison uh, will be barnstorming the red planet of Mars, appearing only two degrees apart from the planet, just a little more than a width of your thumb at the arm's length. Their uh, proximity is no illusion. However, it is a 6.7 million miles difference will separate the comet from the planet Mars's surface. Uh, also, with the comet still being about the 12th magnitude, you will need at least a 6 to 8 inch mirrored telescope to glimpse at it in the eastern sky just before dawn. And that's what's so amazing about this comet. You'll see it always in the pre-dawn hours in the east, toward the, where the sun will rise. It will rise in the east just like the star of Bethlehem did some 2,000 years ago to let us know that a Savior was coming to the world, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now, 2,000 years later, the comet Ison is bringing us another sign. Again, a bright star in the east, 15 times brighter than the moon is what they thought it might be. It may not be that bright, but it will be significantly bright. And it's bringing a ton of debris with it, folks. I mean, and that's what I want to know. What is that debris? We just had a meteorite hit a home in Ohio um, this weekend, killing two people. There were 48 reported sightings of meteorites over Indiana. There were meteorites over, uh, explosive meteorite over top Cincinnati, Ohio. An exploded meteorite over Atlanta, Georgia. Meteorites all, all over Costa Rica. Uh, and down there in um, um, the other parts of the Caribbean. They're seeing them everywhere. What is going on? Are you serious? Is this what? So it's so convenient. Shut the government down. Shut all the telescopes off. Or at least don't show them to the people. I guarantee you they're watching this comment. They're just going to tell you that they shut them down, and we're not going to get to see any of it. I hate to say that, but it's exactly what's taking place right now. Now, the government is also struggling in a lot of, er a lot of other areas, but certainly with NASA saying that its doors are shut, and we will not be released any pictures of whatever's going on with this comet. And uh, this is confusing to a lot of people, very upsetting I'm getting emails from everywhere from folks saying, Paul, are they deliberately doing this? Is this, well, my answer would be maybe, but it's certainly affecting our ability to watch the skies. And one of the things the Bible said in Matthew, in Luke 20, uh, 21, 25, there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, the stress of nations with perplexity and the sea and the waves roaring. These are, and men's hearts will even fail them for fear of what's coming upon the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. We'll remind you as the day gets closer so you can stock up on snacks and beverages, but a comet is coming, a big and brilliant comet arriving in November 2013. 
it could potentially be 15 times brighter than the moon and visible in broad daylight over the U.S. We will be your Comet Network and we'll keep you updated. Keep looking up, folks. Lift up your head, for your redemption is drawing now. Breaking, breaking news out of Chicago, Illinois. We've got a serious situation. Two commuter trains have just crashed in Chicago, Illinois this morning, September the 30th, 2013, injuring dozens of people, according to CNN, affiliate WLS Chicago. Authorities in Forest Park, Illinois, say 48 people were transported to hospitals with what are believed to be minor injuries, according to the station. But two Chicago Transit Authority Blue Line trains, one was eastbound, the other was westbound, were on the same track when they struck and hit one another around 8 o'clock a.m. local time in Chicago, Illinois. The, the sky, what a great time for the government to shut down in America and NASA to shut down when there's fireballs, meteorites falling from the sky everywhere. One hit a home in Ohio, killed two people. Have you heard about it in the news? No. And there's 48 sightings of meteorites over top Indiana and a huge explosion near Cincinnati, Ohio, and another huge explosion in the sky over Atlanta, Georgia. And they're, and they're seeing them over in the Caribbean islands. And now we've got a, I've got pictures, Brazil. I wanna thank Tina of Indiana. Tina, thank you, great report from Brazil. Get some coffee. I'm gonna show you what's falling from the sky. I'm gonna show you what's going on right now. Something biblical's going on with the signs of the second coming of Christ. And now the comet Ison. I think, I think this is part of the debris. This is what's ahead of Ison, not what's coming off that tail behind it, which is gonna whip toward the earth in December. That kind of reminds me of a song by Merle Haggard. If we can make it through December. I mean, seriously. But here we go. Here we go. Brazil, look at this thing. What is that? That is a meteorite in Brazil. What? In Brazil. Look at this thing. Mexico. Now listen to this story, folks. In a little, small, very poor community in the Yucatan Peninsula of Brazil, where some of the remnant of the Mayan Indians live. Hang on! Don't forget the Mayans and the, and the uh, <laughs> December 21st, 2012, the end of the world prophecy and the 13 crystal skulls. Well, uh, they might be getting a wake-up call as well. Here we go. Fireball in the Yucatan causes nausea and headaches for the rescuers. That's right. In, um, <laughs> are you serious? I, I kept saying Brazil. I meant this is Brazil. Brazil, weird news is the, forgive me. Yucatan is in Mexico. I know that. But this is the Brazil weird news. So forgive me for that. All right. In Mexico on September 22nd, Sunday at 8.30 p.m., a meteorite come crashing into this little small community there in Mexico. Now, the fireball, it says that uh, they were gathering around the port of a community where they live, some remnants of the Mayan Indians. This meteorite fell from as like a fireball that came out of the sky, it scared and still is scaring some of the dwellers of the place. The locals were waiting to see a show of a small circus. A bunch of locals had come out for a circus. When all of a sudden in the center of the community, when, it, when suddenly an object in flames came falling at high speed from the sky. Imagine this, what timing. A bunch of Mayan Indians out for a circus when a you got a show all right. Well, hang on. The vision was much bright. The person stood there fascinated as the glow when it began to decrease, about to touch the soil. When it happened, it was like a pyrotechnic blast. At this moment occurred an electric blackout. In the zone of the fall was observed a twinkling blue illumination. 
from this meteorite. EMPs. A turf, a, 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 a turf. This is one for the record. I'm Diane, and today is October 2nd, 2013, and here are your news updates for today. Alrighty, then a special birthday shout out to Jenny, Jenny in California, and Casey in uh, Washington. Heads up! Heads up! Alrighty, then. <clears throat> Moving on. Extinction Protocol 2012 and beyond. Fukushima could be 15,000 times worse than Hiroshima with removal of fuel rods. Okay, there's nothing else new. That was actually yesterday's. The Watchers Watching the World. Sunday CME Spark Moderate G2 Geomagnetic Storming. Alrighty then. There's all that there. Also... The breaking news, breakingnews.com. Tennessee Highway Patrol confirms eight deaths in bus crash. Six from bus, one from tractor trailer, one from SUV. Coming off a of WBIR. Also, Tropical Storm Jerry moving northeastward in Atlantic. No coastal warnings or watches in effect. That's coming out of NHC Atlantic. They're both from an hour ago. Let's see what else we got. A flood advisory has been issued for East Central Miami, Dade, including City of Miami and Coral Gables, until 7.15 p.m. That's coming, that's one hour ago from the Miami Herald. Okay, nothing else new that we're interested in. Alrighty then, let's move on. E.N.E. News, the energy news. <clears throat> Alright. Today, Japan professor really shocked they found contaminated fish by U.S. coast. Urgent situation to get samples, but stopped by customs. They need to understand just how critical this is. Alrighty then, that's all I see right now for today. So, I'm going to attach a bunch of videos for you. And uh, stay tuned, more on E&E &E News I, I'm going to attach. And I won't edit it out. There's some, like, they put some funny stuff in the middle of it. And Miss Milky the Clown, one channel. She'll put, it, put in something in there. I don't know. But, uh... I won't edit it out. You guys can watch the whole version of it. Alrighty then. Take care. Be prepared for anything. And I'll see you on the flip side tomorrow. It is, it is Wednesday hump day. The eve of the eve of Friday. <laughs> Be prepared for anything. Oh, wait. Also, wait. I'm going to add to this. Just in. Apocalypse 30,000 dead sheep in Uruguay. And they said it's from the storms. They were having a lot of rain for three days in storms. Also, there's a couple other things. This is off of Paul Bagley's channel. I don't know. He raises the question, could the American president dissolve the Congress? Uh-oh, heads up on that one. Also, 188-day earthquake cycle is on October 6th. So, heads up on that. Alrighty then. 
Be prepared for anything. I'll see you tomorrow on the flip side. Stay tuned. Here we go. Now listen, I've been out here all this time, and I haven't been complaining about anything yet, so I think it's time to go into the complaint department. This is just a series of things that are pissing me off, okay? The Japanese government still won't allow many residents near the Fukushima plant back into areas of high radiation. Yet the Environment Ministry has started trial decontaminations in these no-go zones. Officials have designated parts of seven municipalities near the plant as unsuitable for living due to radiation over 50 millisieverts per year. The government has delayed major cleanup operations in these areas in fear of exposing people to radiation. However, ministry personnel have begun trials in five areas to find out how much can be removed. That work will continue until the end of the year. The ministry wants to determine cleanup costs. It will also study ways to control any radiation workers are exposed to. After these steps, officials say they can decide on how to decontaminate the zones. Japan's nuclear regulator is coming under fire from a group of leading experts. They say the body charged with overseeing the aftermath of the accident in Fukushima is too bureaucratic. The Nuclear Regulation Authority fielded comments on Monday from six experts who are studying the crisis in Fukushima. They looked at the NRA's first year of operation. One of the experts is a lawyer who served on a diet panel that investigated the accident. The regulators are acting like bureaucrats. When something goes wrong, they summon TEPCO officials and demand explanations. People must doubt that the regulators are really getting the truth. Another expert said drafting rules and standards isn't enough to win public trust. He urged regulators to take a more proactive stance in dealing with the crisis. Others suppressed for reforms at the NRA Secretariat. It's staffed mostly by personnel from the previous regulator and another body which was under a government umbrella that promoted nuclear power. Come on, everybody, let's be hypocritical bastards. NRA Chief Shinichi Tanaka said he feels the organization has been given a mandate that's beyond its abilities. But he said NRA members will try their best. Wow, now that's vital information. Workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant face another challenge. They say that contaminated rainwater has overflowed when they were pumping it into a temporary tank. An official from the Tokyo Electric Power Company says four tons of contaminated rainwater has seeped into the ground. A tropical storm in September created the excess. It has been contained by barriers that surround the storage tanks. TEPCO officials say the rainwater overflowed when workers were pumping it into temporary tanks. The officials say the radiation level of the water just after the storm was 160 becquerels per liter. This is five times higher than the government's safety limit for releasing water into the ocean. Workers are hurrying to analyze contamination levels in the immediate area. The Nuclear Regulation Authority has expressed concern about the way TEPCO has handled the contaminated rainwater. That don't make no sense! I just made it up. Am I right? I just made it up. The, the problem right now is that Japanese researchers are afraid to tell the truth. We've got doctors calling us at Fairwind saying, um, you know, we know our patients have radiation illness and the hospital isn't allowing us to tell the patients that. 
We've got researchers talking about defective uh, defects in animals, and uh, they're not allowed to publish their data. So the last piece of this is transparency. And frankly, if you leave it to the Japanese government, we're never going to get transparency. We've got to get the people involved with an oversight panel made up of civilians who have, um, who have nothing to gain or nothing to lose from telling the truth. Just really quickly, Arnie, just final question. Why do you think there hasn't been more worldwide reaction to the disaster in Japan? I mean, in terms of nuclear power, uh, we've seen Germany has decided to phase out nuclear power by 2022, but we really haven't heard about this elsewhere. You know, we're, we're addicted. Um, America's got 100 nukes and 20% of our power. The French have uh, 60 nukes and 80% of their power comes from it. So, you know, it's like you need another fix tomorrow. And, and the addiction is ours and the pain is occurring in Japan. We have to realize that the, the pain of the Japanese is our pain as well and, uh, and join with them to solve this problem. Contamination is also affecting exports. Japan's fisheries head wants South Korea to lift a ban on marine products from Fukushima and other prefectures. The South imposts the ban in response to leaks at the nuclear plant. The chief of the National Federation of Fisheries Cooperative Associations, Hiroshi Kishi, delivered a written request to the South Korean ambassador to uh, Japan's uh, Ibyong-gi uh, in Tokyo. It uh, noted that Japanese uh, marine products must meet radiation safety standards before they can be exported. The request says the ban is based on weak scientific evidence. Kishi said the government needs to understand the real situation. We want South Korea to lift the embargo as soon as possible. We will continue to request that they end it. Japanese officials say the South Korean ambassador said his government sees the leaks as a major accident, and this has created fear in his country. Stop being so nervous. Later on, we'll get ice cream. Researchers on both sides of the Pacific are working to track effects of the crippled reactors of Fukushima Daiichi in bluefin tuna. A team of American scientists at Stanford University reported last year they detected low levels of radioactive cesium in 33 of 50 bluefin caught off the coast of California. Team members said the damaged nuclear plant was the source of the contamination. They made their conclusion based on levels of cesium-134, which has a half-life of about two years and only produced by nuclear reactors. The Japanese and U.S. researchers are trying to start a joint study to determine how the toxins got into the tuna. NHK World's Yoichiro Tatewa explains in Japan in depth. Professor Hideo Yamazaki of Kinki University has been studying marine creatures in the waters of Fukushima Prefecture. We estimated concentration levels to be so low they wouldn't be detectable in the U.S. But the fact they found contaminated fish off the coast of the U.S. really shocked us, even if the figures are extremely low. Yamazaki says the level of contamination doesn't pose a threat to human health, but he says he wants to share his data with the U.S. researchers to figure out how the tuna pick up the radioactive material. Yamazaki says it takes time for tuna to accumulate radioactive substances since they're at the top of the marine food chain. Tiny creatures such as plankton absorb radioactive substances first. Small fish then eat the plankton. And big fish like tuna eat the smaller ones. Recent studies show bluefin tuna spend their juvenile period in Japan's coastal waters. The fish then take one to four months to migrate across the Pacific to the U.S. West Coast. Yamazaki says he thinks he can figure out how and where the bluefin tuna accumulate radioactivity by studying fish on both sides of the ocean. He asked the U.S. researchers to collaborate with his team. Japan needs to work with people from different sides to gather and assess the same set of data. We need to provide the public with reliable information. Researchers at Stanford University in April sent 20 30-gram slices of tuna to Japan. 
but customs agents at Kansai International Airport stopped them. They said proper documentation was missing. Customs clearance is tough for bluefin tuna because of stock conservation requirements. They said a document that proves the samples are not from the Atlantic Ocean is needed to start import procedures. But the U.S. government does not issue such paperwork for research purposes. So the samples are still at the airport, frozen six months on. This is an urgent situation. We need customs officials to understand just how critical this is and facilitate the timely transportation of materials that need to be studied. Scientists in the U.S. and Japan are calling for international cooperation and flexibility so they can better study the effects of the nuclear accident. A Japanese government official later told NHK World a request for the release of the samples by scientists is being considered. Now, the increase in confidence is an important factor in a decision by the Prime Minister. Shinzo Abe wants to press ahead with a plan to rein in Japan's mountain of debt. He's announcing later in the day he'll raise the consumption tax to 8% from 5 starting next April. But he's pairing the move with a new stimulus package to ease the impact on his main economic priority, growth. Abe has spent months weighing the costs and benefits of the sales tax increase, which was set in motion by the previous administration. He decided to go ahead with it, but he'll inject $50 billion into the economy to offset the impact. Some of that money will go directly to low-income earners. They'll receive about $100 to $150 in cash each. The government will also commit a large chunk of the stimulus toward repairs on old tunnels and bridges. And it will invest in better transportation infrastructure for the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. Lawmakers with the ruling Liberal Democratic Party and coalition partner New Komeito have agreed to consider another idea. They want to scrap a corporate tax designed to raise money for the reconstruction effort in the Northeast. The levy was scheduled to expire at the end of March 2015, but Prime Minister Abe wants to end it a year early. LDP lawmakers say they'll look for other sources of revenue to support the reconstruction. They're also proposing a two-year extension of a tax break for companies that increase their employees' salaries. And they plan to start discussions on setting new corporate tax rates. The plan will actually see the sales tax doubled. The first step is from 5 to 8%, which will come into effect in April. The second step will see an increase to 10% in two years. Even some who support the increase worry the government won't properly manage the pay rise it's about to give itself. The question is how they are going to increase the revenue from tax. They are talking about lowering the corporate tax again, but the government has always been too lenient towards businesses. I hope they can collect tax but still support the weak in society and pay for education and medical costs. Therein lies the challenge for a government which has to try to balance the books. Wayne Hay, Al Jazeera, Tokyo. President Rouhani's tone isn't swaying leaders in Israel. They remain convinced the Iranians are using their nuclear program to build a bomb. President Obama is trying to reassure them that the U.S. will maintain its tough stance on the issue. Obama met at the White House with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. I believe that it's the combination of a credible military threat and the pressure of those sanctions that have brought Iran to the negotiating table. Our hope is that we can resolve this diplomatically, but uh, as President of the United States, I've said before, and I will repeat, that uh, we take no options off the table, including military options. Obama added that Rouhani must back up his words with actions to prove to the U.S. and other nations that Iran is not trying to make a nuclear weapon. You are merely a few minutes older, but infinitely more knowledgeable than before.